This is a story I've been waiting to hear about since I found out from our Harold the Hark, Hark, Hark Peacock, who's our Ipswich historian. The Australia's greatest lover started his career in Ipswich almost a decade ago, and I cannot wait to hear this story. How are you, Harold the H? Oh, well, thanks, Danny. And we're going back a century. So it's a de- mm. unfortunately it's before your time. Oh, but, but, but was he practising to have sex or something? Well, what's going on? Well, I guess he was practising because it was in the medical sphere. His name was George Downey, and in 1922, Downey was a radiologist here at the Ipswich General Hospital. Yeah, right. And that's where he met the young Ipswich girl, another hospital employee, Miss Christina Laurie. Mm-hmm. Now, she was the daughter of Alexander Laurie, who was, a, who was the manager of the Blackheath coal mine here. The, the family lived in Queen Street out at Newtown. Now, right. Danny was 30 years old and Christina was just 19, right. and the couple fell madly in love. Right. They eloped and they got married at All Saints Church in Brisbane mm-hmm. in 1923. Wow. But the problem started mm-hmm. because Christina was under 21 and she didn't have her father's permission. Right. So Danny was arrested for marrying a minor. <laughs> but hold on, but hold then, on. How old was she? She was 19, but was back then you had to be minor? under 20. Well, back then you had to have permission from the father to get married if you're under 21. And bring it back, that's what I say. Yeah, but anyway, what, what the, I guess it hasn't changed is that the bigger problem came out after that because Danny had been married before. In fact, he was still married. And so it's that was the start of the career of the man who was, who was to be described as Australia's greatest lover. Oh. You see... Danny was 20 years old when he first married 18-year-old Linda Thompson in 1913 down in Kempsey in New South Wales. Mm-hmm. He went to the First World War. He survived the sinking of his ship by a German submarine on the way over, served with the Australian Medical Corps, so it would have seen some bad things, mm-hmm. and then came back to Australia for a seemingly normal life as a husband and father. Mm-hmm. But that's when it all went weird for him, and the, the world of fraud and bigamy started. You see... After his illegal second marriage to the Ipswich girl, Christine, in 1923, in 1925 in Melbourne, he married Nora Williams. In oh. 1926, again in Melbourne, he married Bavina Ward. Oh. Ten weeks later, God. he married Mary Roemaker oh. in Port Moresby. Valerica. After a nine-year break to, you know, to um, you know, rest and recuperate, Danny was back in Melbourne. In 1937, he married Iris, jo- uh, Iris <laughs> Johnson. Later that same year in Brighton, he married Ona King. He then had a bit of a spell in prison, Danny. Yeah. Uh, but that didn't stop him because in 1952 in Paddington he married <laughs> Thelma Snake. So all up, Danny Excuse got Excuse me, what was the name? Times. Thelma Snake. Thelma Snape. Snape. Right. Yeah, he got married. But anyway. How many times? He got married eight times, oh. including one marital rampage where he had three weddings in 11 months. <laughs> Now, he got away with it because he went by at least nine different names and, and six different careers. Oh, uh, gee. You know, so, I'm so tired thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. And so, yeah, he was described as Australia's greatest and best educated lover. Uh, and his bigamous career started right here in Queensland with Ipswich's unfortunate 19-year-old Christina Laurie in 1923. But, Danny, the tragedy of the story is that mm. young Christina from Ipswich, she never got married again. Oh. Uh, so that was the love of a life, and it was all a fraud. Mate, a hundred years ago, mate. Seriously, and you agree, Sparky? Yeah. These stories should be you are re- mate. The way you're a very good storyteller, but it's it's entertaining, and you find out there will be blokes out there going, "Well, you're kidding yourself, mate. I've married fourteen times, and my wife doesn't know about the other five. But uh, <laughs> you know what? A great story. Australia's greatest love. Was he known as that? Was he? That's right. He, he made headlines around Australia's greatest lover. Now, the thing is, he got, he got caught for those eight marriages. There's probably more. Uh, but because of so yeah. many different names and locations and careers, it's hard to track down. Well, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was a smart, well-educated lover. How many kids did sense. he have? <laughs> well, again, very hard. I've tracked down uh, six, but there's bound to be more. Wow. He, he, he was busy. Well, like the lady up in Toowoomba who's happily married, has got 15. Can you imagine having 15 kids? I Holy. couldn't imagine, but wouldn't, wouldn't it be a happy family? I'm ho- hopefully, they're, they're, you know, Mate, they're they, a great they are a very happy family. In fact, each kid's got its place to help each other. It's really, really happy, happy family. Mate, great story. How do we find out that story and other stories? Because you've got the book here, uh, Dover Court, Tawong's Hidden Treasure and His People by Harold <laughs> Peacock. Where can I get a copy of that? Yeah, you can get a copy of Dover Court book from historyoutthere.com. In fact, next week, Danny, I'll tell you about another Ipswich connection that's in the Dover Court book. 
So and, historyoutthere.com. And Steve, who owns this building that we're in from Choices Carpets, yes. he, uh, I was talking to his manager yesterday and he was fascinated about how it used to be a boarding house and all the psychics used to stay here. Yeah, that's right. He, it's surprisingly he didn't uh, didn't remember that. <laughs> maybe maybe he'll recall and find out who's going to be there next. You're a funny man because he didn't recall or remember, and he's yeah. in the building. Oh, I've got you. All right, that was Harold the <coughs> Peacock with Ipswich history at eight twenty on West Premier Radio. Over to you, Spark Dog. <laughs> 